What's going on dudes and dudettes? So yes, sadly, USC loses their top high school football player coming in next season and cornerback Damani Jackson from modern day. Uh, they don't technically lose him officially because he says USC is still in the running, but he does want to take a couple more visits to other schools officially. And he's going to have another official visit to USC as well before I, I'm assuming he's going to want to sign early in December instead of the February date, the later date. So, I mean, hopefully, as he says, USC is still in the running. So has a lot of respect for everybody there and the fans. But I don't know. Once Alabama and Michigan got involved, it definitely helped him to change his mind. So we could only hope for the best and hope that USC hires a head coach before that date so he can finally get to work and get some of these recruits back. But I don't know. I think it's a ticking time bomb when it comes to recruits and they're wasting time right now without filling out the head coaching role. So they got to do it quickly before more of this stuff happens with their other players. And then sadly, also in the NFL, USC wide receiver Robert Woods of the LA Rams ended up tearing his ACL last Friday. So he is going to miss the rest of this season maybe a little bit of the beginning of next season as well knowing that this is like a nine to ten month rehab but definitely sucks for him he was having a pretty solid year even though cooper cup is having an amazing year on that team but yeah just sucks to see him go down and then rams got lucky because somehow they were able to sign odell beckham jr that same exact day when it happened so I guess luck luck is on their side for the LA teams. And yes, Drake London, even though he hasn't really been playing the last couple games because of injury and isn't going to play the rest of the year, he did still make the top 10 finalists for the Blitnikoff Award, which is going to the top wide receiver in college football. So that's nice. Hopefully his stats will keep him up there to be in the top three or top four once the official voting go, goes through. But I don't know, because a lot of those guys are pretty pretty darn good, especially the past couple years that are still left on that list. So you kind of hope he's in the top three, but I think uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Then USC basketball. So yes, they went on the road to Philly, into Temple, as I mentioned in the last video, and they did get the vi they, ugh, they get the victory, 76 to 71. It was nice to see them struggle against a pretty solid basketball team. At least they were able to get up to 20 points at one point for the highlights I saw, but they did let them get into the game and lose the lead, I believe, for a bit. But yes, luckily they got the victory. And another note on them was that it was Andy Einfeld, the head coach's 200th career basketball win. So that's cool for him. Then they're also going to be playing, or actually, they ended up finally making the top 25 after those two first victories in the first week. So... They're right at number 25 uh, in the nation, but hopefully they can continue to move up. And yes, they are still on the road. I believe they're in Florida now to play Florida Gulf Coast University, which is the school that uh, Andy Einfeld, the head coach, was at recently. So he'll be playing against his old team. Hopefully, the Trojans could get a victory for him against them. And it should be an easy win tomorrow on Tuesday. Then... <clears throat> Yes, the Panthers of the NFL had signed one of my ex-favorite uh, quarterbacks from USC, Matt Barkley, off of the Tennessee Titans practice squad. So he, I thought he was going to end up getting a shot at starting, but of course the Panthers ended up signing Cam Newton as well. And he's the one that ended up playing this last Sunday over Barkley. I don't know if he's still on the team as of yet, but maybe they did keep him. You never know, but most likely if Sam Darnold does have a chance to come back and play as a backup, they probably will let Barkley go and hopefully he'll be on another team soon after that. Then Devin Brown, the one other top player from high school right now, committed to USC out there in Utah. He did have a pretty nice game this last weekend. Um, he threw six touchdowns and he led his team to the the title game out there in Utah. So it's two straight years that a USC commit has led that team to the title game. And last year, Jackson Dart won it. This year, hopefully Devin Brown can win it for that same school as well. But 
I don't know, he's another guy that could get flipped pretty easily to another school. So like I said, they got to get that head coach in right away or we'll lose out on him as well. Then they put up an article saying that LeBron is actually close to returning, even though just last week I reported and you guys saw that they had mentioned he's going to be out maybe one or two extra months from what he's already been out for. But I don't know. He's just been doing side work stuff. Hasn't really been um, okayed for like contact drills or any type of practice with the team yet. So I still think he's about two to three weeks away. I'm pretty sure he'll be back by the December 25th game on Christmas Day. I forget who we play, but yeah, I'm sure he'll be back by then. I think it's Brooklyn. Should be a nice game. Then Alex Caruso, yes, he was on ex-Duke players JJ Reddick's podcast, Old Man in the Three. And he was being interviewed saying like what kind of offer that the Lakers did offer him or they did not offer him to return. And it was a pretty low deal. I think JJ Reddick mentioned if it was like a two year, $15 million deal. And he said it was even lower than that. But he said he would have accepted an offer. One of the first offers he got, which was a two year, $20 million deal to return to the Lakers, but the Lakers didn't offer him that. And of course he went and signed with Chicago who gave him, I believe it was a three year, 30 some odd million dollar deal. So might as well take that money while you still can, while you're still young. And it's definitely proven better because he is on one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference right now. And then yes, the Lakers did play Sunday early as an afternoon game, which is pretty weird for them, but they were able to beat the San Antonio Spurs, pretty convincing victory. It was coming close down to the end of the game, but the Lakers ended up pulling away in the final minutes. So that was good to see Anthony Davis. For some reason, he always goes off against San Antonio. So I hope they end up playing them a lot more in the future, but he had around 34 points and like 17 rebounds, pretty good for him. Taylor Horton Tucker finally returned back from injury and he scored, I believe it was 17 or 15 points. Uh, Wayne Ellington hit a bunch of threes. He hit five threes off the bench. Him finally getting some more consistent play now that he's healthy. Russell Westbrook almost had a triple-double as well. So yes, finally, once uh, hopefully LeBron and other guys get healthier, they will be able to beat these teams more handily and definitely within the double digits. But yes, they're getting close, but at least they're getting some of these victories against Western Conference teams at this moment and then yes as i mentioned last video i was uh, unsure how many players duke had officially signed in the early signing period i haven't mentioned derek whitehead but yes they have officially signed him they made a release on their twitter so that was cool to see he's one of their top five star players they also signed who's now considered the number one player in the nation coming into next season is Derek lively the second he's a power forward slash center but he's only he was like number two, but now he's only number one because the other guy is, I think he already enrolled at the school he's going to early, like a whole year early. So he graduated sooner. And that's why our guy moves up to number one, but it looks good for Duke stats, but really he was still a top two type of player anyways. They also officially signed the shooting guard, Jaden Shutt. I believe he was a four star, so he seems pretty talented. Then they also signed Kyle Filipowski, I believe he was that small forward, power forward type of guy who can shoot from three as well. So it's a nice four four group of guys that John Shire already has for next year in his first year taking over after Coach K. So we'll see what other guys end up staying, whether they're the older guys or still the younger guys end up staying an an extra year because they need to. And that team should be pretty formidable going into next season as well. Definitely happy about that. And then Duke, after that Kentucky game, did have two more games that week. It's usually weird. College basketball play uh, team plays three games in one week, but they did. And you can kind of tell by the score of the final game how it hurt them. But yes, that second game they played against Army. And of course, it's Coach K's alma mater. He went and served in the military and ended up coaching there as well as one of his first head coaching jobs and they hosted them for Veterans Day weekend, which is pretty cool. They ended up getting the victory against them 82 to 56. It was 
pretty close in the first half, but once again, they pulled away. Moncaro did pretty well, had 17 points. He's been playing very well ever since the Kentucky game. And they also ended up playing another team in Campbell the very next day on Saturday. And I never heard of Campbell, but Duke should have beat them handily. But I'm pretty sure they retired because it was already their third game and their second in as many days in a row. But they still got that victory against them, 67-56. to And I know one of these games, I forget which one, I think it was the last one where Wendell Moore ended up getting a triple-double. He's a guy that I've always been up and down on. He was a talented guy coming out of high school, never really did his thing while at Duke until now he's in his third or fourth year and he's finally playing really well with the type of guys that are around him. Uh, maybe my lack of faith in him has made him a better player, but yes, it's definitely looking a lot better this year for him. And because of these victories, Paolo Boncaro, the freshman was named the ACC Freshman of the Week. So that's good for him to be able to win the ACC Freshman of the Year and Player of the Year if he's already getting recognized as early as, you know, week one. So definitely happy about that. So yeah, that's all the news we have today. And I think, I forget who they play. Uh, I know I, I got the thing, but I forgot to write it down who they're playing. But yeah, that's who they're playing uh, tomorrow as well. So of course, my teams are playing on Tuesday night again. Looking forward to that. So thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.